Hello, good afternoon everyone. My name is Tim White, Timothy White Sr. I am also the founder of Tim White Publishing Company and I have a couple people in the studio with me that we will be talking with them shortly or you'll hear them in the background and once in a while a camera put their faces up there so you can see who they are. There they are, these two gentlemen. You heard from us all in the interview on last week. So this week we are going to take that step out. We're stepping a little further and we're going to talk about some of the things we talked about during that interview session to help you understand better who we are. And as uh, Larry James is in the back, I'm sure those who know the station KAZ, you know who he is. So you can say, hey, Larry, back there so people know that, hey, he's here. He's here with us. But what we want to do is we want to jump in and we want to talk about some things that are interesting to us all. And what we want to talk about this week is who are you? We want to talk about who you are. And before we do that, since this is a Christian station, we have the option always to open up with a word of prayer. We're going to open up with a word of prayer and we're going to get into the session that we're about to partake of. So let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this time and day and an opportunity to share your word. We've come together with boldness that we can lift you up. And as you have said in your word, if you be lifted up, you would draw all men unto yourself. This is the cause. This is the purpose for which we're here to seek your eternal love and your gratitude for what we do. For we praise and thank you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right. Now we're going to get started. We're going to talk about I wanted, We talked about last week in the interview process a little bit about who I am. And Mr. James asked a little bit about my background as, as far as my Christian walk. And I'm going to share a little bit more over a period of time, the months and uh, weeks and the months to come. We're going to be talking about who I am a little bit. And that's what this is all about today. Who are you? And I'm inviting you to take a journey with us. When I say with us, you're going to take a journey with us and I want you to participate. And in that participation, you're going to hear some things, you're going to see some things, but most of all, we want you to change some things about your life. That's what this is all about. The name of the show is Unlocking the Power of You. In order for you to unlock it, you have to be aware of where the power comes from. What does it emanate from and how to unlock it? We're going to show you that you have the power to unlock the power that's in you. But in order to do it effectively, you have to learn a little bit about who you are. Most of us have no clue who we are. We know who we think we are, but we're not sure who we are as of yet. What do I mean by that? If you think about who you are, your name, my name is Timothy White Sr. That's my name. That's my address to this body that you see. That's the address, but it doesn't tell you who I am. It just shows you, hey, this is Tim White. This is Timothy White Sr. But who is he? In, our, in all actuality, many of us don't know. We know our names, as we said, and we're going to talk about your name is great, but who you are is more important. And I need for you to know who you are. And many of us don't know who we are. As a matter of fact, since this is a, a, a Christian principle, I want to share with all of us. We are all God's creation. So we are God's creatures. We're God's creatures. But we're not all, not all, we're all God's creatures. Every one of us have been created by God, but we're not all God's children. Now, how do we know we're not all God's children? I'm going to share this with you. And this, again, this is going to help you because it's going to go back into who I am and how I got to the place that I am. As uh, Larry brought up last week, who am I? My Christian faith. Where did it come from? I had to first learn that I am God's creature by creation, but I'm not God's child until I have accepted, as we talked about last week, until I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Once I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, that moved me from just being God's creature to one of God's children. How do we know that? First John talks about that, but John, the gospel of John and verse 12, it simply says as many as received him being God, he gave us power to become the children of God. So I became a child of God by the new birth in Jesus Christ. And that is the fundamental of who I am. And as we talk about this going through, you will understand a little bit more about that because it's important for us to know who we are in the body of Christ. But even with that being said, none of us have had an easy time in life, particularly those of us in this room. You know what it's like to have a hard time in life. 
But there are people who go through hardships and don't know how to deal with it. And what we want to do is help them to deal with the hardships that they're going through life. I, as a child growing up, I went through some things and some hardships that I'm going to share with you in the long run. But I want those of you who are watching this program, who are listening to the sound of my voice, for you to understand that no matter what you're going through, you can overcome it. There's nothing that you can't get through. The problem is that we take it too personally. And as a matter of fact, I'll say it this way. Many of us blame God for our situations and our circumstances. It's his fault, right? We do that. We say it's God's fault. Why did God do this to me? Instead of looking at it for what it is, it's a learning opportunity. We're here to have a learning opportunity. Those of you who are hurting out there, believe me, you're not the only one hurting. But if you're hurting, and this is what we talked about before, and I'm going to share this as well, and we're going to take our time through some of these things because it's important for us to know it. There are three words that I like to use, and they are these words. Hurt, heal, or healing. And then there's the last one. Well, let's put the ING here. Every one of us hurt and are hurting. Whether we want to admit it or not, we're hurting people. And when we hurt, we tend to want to hurt other people. So we have to move from this. We start here hurting. We can heal ultimately, and the reason for our healing is so we can help other people. So we have to look at where we're at in this range. Am I hurting right now? Yes, many of us are hurting. When I was a child going through foster care, I was hurt. I was abused. Many of you are sitting here, maybe you hurt. You don't know what to do. So you turn to alcohol, you turn to drugs, you turn to all types of things and simply say, this is my out. This is how I'll fix what's wrong. That's not the remedy to what's going on. But in order to get this out of us, somewhere along the line, we have to have somebody bring it to our attention that we are hurting. How do we hurt? When we hurt, we lash out at people. And we have to understand, how do I get from this hurting to the healing process? That's part of what this program is about. It's helping you see where you are, see the hurt, understand the hurt, and then change that. We talked about it last week in the interview. There's a process that each of us go through. We're in the process right now. How do I get myself past this? And, uh, and I say that. Get past this. How do I get past the hurt? I need to see certain things. I need to hear certain things. And a matter of fact, in order to get through this process, we need to be able to see somebody who has hurt. Those who have hurt are in a good position to help those who are hurting. I think you would agree with that. That's part of the process. We can't get through this by ourselves. None of us get through hurt and pain on our own. We need to have someone in our lives to help encourage the healing process. So when we look at hurt, then we can understand there's a healing process and that part of that healing process. And ultimately when I heal, the purpose of my healing is to turn around and help somebody else. It's not to remain the same. And what we're looking at right now, if we look at the news every day, you see people are hurting. Part of our mission is to reach out into the school systems. We want to reach into the school system. We're trying to help young people, young people who are hurting. There are young people who are going through dramatic uh, situations in their home life. Many of them are being abused. And a child who's abused and not listened to ultimately becomes an abuser themselves. And we have to understand that if we want them to change, then we have to have the burden put on us, which is this. Are we listening to those who are hurting or we just want them to shut up and leave us alone? I'm going to let you think about that for a moment. Because those who are hurting are saying, help me. How do they say help me? Most of them get violent. Most of them get irritated, resentful, hateful, rebellious. They do things. And the reason they do things is because they're simply saying, I need help. I want help. And what do we tend to do when a child comes to us and say they need our help? We tend to turn a blind eye to them or deaf ear to them. 
What do we generally say to them? I'm too busy right now. Let's talk about that later. A child's sense of urgency is different from ours. And again, what is the name of this program? It's Unlocking the Power of You. So in order to unlock the power that is in us, we have to first recognize there's something wrong that needs to be fixed. And the things that are wrong that needs to be fixed, we can't fix it if we ignore them. Either in ourselves or the people around us. When we talk about this word, there's another word that we tend to throw around a lot. This word is used a lot, but little is known of it from us. We use this word love, but it's not really love. We talk about love, but do we really know what love is? Love is not just a four letter word, but people tend to look at it that way. Love, most people, most of us, when we were coming up, we didn't know what love was. You know what we look for? Comfort and security. We, we classify comfort and security as love. Long as I was comfortable, long as I was secure, we say it's love. That's not love. And that's what we have to really reteach. We have to reteach people. We have to help them understand what genuine love is and where genuine love comes from. We say it all the time, and we talked about it last week. We talk about God as love, but how do we know God? How do we know we, how are we sure that we really, really know God? That's what love, God is love. And this is where we're going to start. We're going to start with, as I said, this program, the topic of this particular program is, who are you? Do you know who you are? Or do you say who you want to be? Or who you think you are? Or who you want people to believe you are? We need to come to grips with and understand who we truly, truly are. Do we know the truth of who we are? Now, and my my. My marketing manager talk about this with me all the time lately. We're evil people. Aren't we? Yes. We're evil people. We don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that we're evil people. We always want to hear how good we are, how loving we are, how compassionate we are. But we are basically evil people, do evil things all the time. How do you know we're evil people? Because we always want what we want when we want it. That's the bottom line, isn't it? I want what I want when I want it. And I don't care how it affects other people. I just want what I want. We have to change the dynamics. And the only way for us to change the dynamic is to change what influences come in our lives and how we allow the influences in our lives. So that's what one of the things we're going to be talking about over the course of the weeks to come. But here's what I want to do. I'm going to invite every one of you to take a journey with us. We're going on a journey. And in this journey, we're going to find a lot of things. We're going to see a lot of things. We're going to hear a lot of things. And we're going to take a number of stops along the way. And the purpose of these stops is so we can see certain things and participate in certain things. And that's what we want each one of you who are listening, who are watching to do. We want you to participate in what we're doing. We want you to go on a journey with us. Yes, I'm an author. I'm a writer. There's a number of books we will talk about. But beyond that, we need to help people. In fact, we need to help one another. We don't do enough of that. We're hypercritical of one another. I had over the years, I've been in the ministry for 48 years. And in those 48 years, believe me, I can tell you there are people who have been telling me what I need to do as a minister. And you see me, I'm wearing a vest without a jacket. And that was intentional. Because in the ministry, in my younger days in the ministry, I used to have people tell me, you were inappropriately dressed if I came without a jacket. I was inappropriately dressed if I had short sleeves opposed to long sleeves. That's not, uh, you, you can't do that as you're a minister of God, you're a servant of God. You have to look the part. Well, I don't know what look the part means other than what Jesus said uh, as far as the light shining. If the light is shining, people see the light, they're going to be drawn to the light. The clothing, they're, they're nice. But don't, let's not put our salvation into that. Let's not put it into that. I don't smile a lot. My, my, my market manager and my president over there looking at me like, hey, you don't smile a lot. I don't do a lot of smiling. But I know how to smile. 
See, I just did that. I smile, right? That's good. Yeah. But the, people often take a smile to be genuine. But there's an old song, and I'm going to talk about it real quick. And these older gentlemen in here know it. And I'm sure Larry knows it, too. Undisputed Truth had a song out, right? Yeah. It was called what? Smiling, Smiling Faces. faces. Smiling Faces Tell Lies. It says, smile is just a frown turned upside down. Amen. So sometimes a smile is not always genuine. It's disingenuous. But when we smile and it's sincere and genuine, like, like Art's over there doing that, he's got that smile pushed up on his face, like, yeah, this is what you do. <laughs> and it, it's cool. That's what we want. I want people to come to this program. I want them to come and realize we can have fun, but there's going to be facts. There's a genuineness about what we're doing. We want you to come and be benefited from what we're doing and what we're saying. My partners are here, and they're going to always be here. Uh, you'll, you'll see them, you hear them. If you don't see them on screen, you will hear the voices in the background. Because these are my partners. These are people who have been with me. They have uh, put faith in me and what we're doing. And the ministry is going, and it's getting bigger and bigger every day. Things are happening. I appreciate them. Lord knows I do appreciate them and what they're doing and why they're here. At the same time, this ministry needs to be projected and pushed forth out to people. And one of the reasons we're here is to do that. And from time to time, you may see me smile. I, I, I'm not going to pretend I smile all the time. But I do smile. Especially when these guys do some funny things. And they always do some funny things. You don't see it. But see, this is what relationships, and that's what I want to talk about too coming up. And we're still laying the foundation here. We have to have and establish relationships. Many of us have no clue what a real relationship is. We think a relationship is a yes person. These guys don't always yes me. And that's what life is not about. But we need to look at things for what they are. How do we get people to change who they are and to who they need to be? That's what this program is about. Now we say this unlocking the power, unlocking the power of you. How do we unlock it? First, we have to recognize that you have power. Everyone has power, but they don't know how to dip into that power. What we want to do in the next weeks and months is teach you, the viewing audience and the listening audience, we want to teach you how to get in touch with that power that is in you. The power that is in you and the power that can come from you. How to build that up. How do we build it up? It's going to take some time. It's going to take a little bit of time. And one of the things you're going to need, there's several things you're going to need in order to do that. One is you're going to need to take time in the word of God. Because without God, you can't do anything anyway. We need him. And one of the greatest fears in positions that people hold of authority, they're afraid to talk about faith. And in the weeks to come, we're going to talk about three things that I believe that hinders most of us in our relationship with God and our relationship with one another. We put our feelings and our fear ahead of our faith. I'm going to say that again. We put our fears and our feelings ahead of our faith. And if we do that, you can't properly heal because you're not going to heal properly if you're fearful of making the steps that are necessary or that you are stuck on how you feel about certain things. Because feelings and fear will hinder our faith. We're supposed to walk by faith and not by sight. And over the course of the weeks to come, we're going to be showing you how that is possible and how we can dispense some of the stupid things that are going on around us that are necessary. So hurting, you saw it on the board, hurting, healing, and helping. We need to move past our feelings and our fears to our faith. And if we do that, all the books, I've written a number of books, and none of these books are going to matter if you have fear in what you're doing. We have to change who we are. In order to change who we are, we have to know who we are. So who are you? I don't mean your name. I want each one of you to think about that. I don't want you to think of just your name or who you are. I want you to think about who you genuinely and sincerely are. Are. Do people know who you are by your words or do they know who you are by your actions? Many of us 
say things that we don't mean. And last week we talked about that. There are people who have a, a good working head knowledge of the word of God. They know what it says, but they don't know how it applies. We say we want this program to be relevant, thought provoking and life changing. How is the Bible relevant? We need to look at how the Bible is relevant in our lives, how these other books are relevant in our lives. What do we mean to one another? How do we make the proper adjustments to one another? It's important for us to look at these things. My partners and I, and I'm saying that a lot, you're going to hear me say that a lot because they're my partners. My partners and I, we'll, we have a vision moving forward. And things we want to do, things that we need to do. We need your help to do it. We're not in this by ourselves. And as time goes on, we're going to invite you in to do some things with us, to help us, to assist us, to encourage us, to be a part of us, so we can continue to grow and do the things that we have been called and assigned to do. I'm not going to try to do this by myself. Now I'm going to ask you, each one of you out there you're listening, you're watching, I want you to join us. When I say join us, we're not forcing people to join us. We've been asking people to get on board, get involved, and it's up to them what they do. How you do it is important, not just what you do. Now, here's the thing. When you get involved, we're inviting you in with us. We're inviting you to sit in with us. But be mindful of where you decide to sit down. Because everybody don't belong in the chief seats, do they? Nope. Some people belong in the back. When I say belong in the back, because they choose to not do the things that they've been called and assigned by God to do. We need to make some decisions. We're going to make some decisions as a business. We're going to make decisions as individuals and our decisions as a business and as individuals. We're prayerful they're going to change lives. I want people to come forth. I want you to come on board with us, do some things. And if you do it right, there's some things that we're going to give. I'm going to give you four words or five words here that we need to also incorporate. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about five words here. Number one is that we need to, well, let me, I don't want to start with that one. We need to start with this. We need to reflect on who we are. We need to reflect on where we come from. And then after we do some reflecting, and we're going to talk about reflections, and then we have to do from reflection or reflect to we're going to go from reflect to inspect to this one. And then So we're going from reflect to inspect to dissect to, re, uh, to redirect. And there's a fifth one. We'll save that one. But it ties into this, how we need to do things. We need to reflect on who we are. Remember what we're talking about, unlocking the power of you. In order to unlock the true power that is you, we have to reflect. Reflect means to pause. Consider where you are, where you're going, what you're going to do. To inspect means to check out. To dissect means to take it apart. And then to redirect, redirect is means moving it in another direction. And these are things that we need to all be able to do in accord with the unlocking the power of you. We have to reflect. We have to inspect things. We have to dissect those things. And we have to redirect. It's part of the course that we're on. And how do we do it? The key to this is going to be in each one of you. Our task is to get you in touch with yourself, your inner self. That's what we want to do. That's the course. So with that being said, unlocking. To unlock means to know where some things are. Putting things down, uh, 
I know it would have been easier probably to put superimpose these things, but that would take some time. To unlock means that we have to know where the source is, that that needs to be unlocked. Each one of us have something in us that we need to unlock. And what we have the greatest doubt of is this. As we said, we're going to be talking at length, at length about our faith, how to unlock your faith. How do we get to that faith? Where is the source of the faith? And I, I'm not, I don't want to sound preachy, but I'm going to be sharing some things over the next few weeks that they're personal things that had to be unlocked. And again, I thank God for the people in my life right now who have been there for me to help me see certain things that needed to be unlocked. I know there's some young people that are going to come on board with us. And that, I know some young people are going to probably, probably be watching this program. And I want them to understand something, too. It's not going to be easy. You're going to hurt. I hurt many times. I can't tell you the time, how many times I've sat and I've cried from pain and the hurt and the disappointment. And yes, I even at, at one point, another didn't know what was going to happen in my life. And I wanted to, to check out like most people do. But you have to be willing to make some decisions. And those decisions, you need to talk to people. Part of what we're doing is communicating. You need to talk. You need to talk to people. You need to have somebody in your life. If you don't have anybody in your life to talk to, let's find somebody that you can talk to. There are people out there. My partners and I, hey, this is a ministry. If you need to talk, if you want to talk, you can reach out through KZ to us. And we'd be more than willing to sit down and talk with you, do whatever is necessary. Because, again, in the next few weeks, we have some things that we're going to be bringing. We want people to get to know who we are, but we can't do that without you first watching the program, listening to the program, responding to the program, like it, share it, put it out there for people. Because this is not about Tim White. This is about you. It's about every one of you who are watching the program, what we intend to do what we want to do. We want to get you on board, but we want, to, we want your lives to change. We want you to participate, not just be a spectator. Anybody can be a spectator. Anyone can watch what's going on. Anyone can make excuses, and that's what we're going to talk about too. There's a laziness, and I, I dare say this, among our people as well. There's a laziness about doing things. We need to counteract the laziness. We need to come away from the laziness. We need to come away from the excuse making. What is that? One of the things that we always talk about. I've heard it. All the things that I'm talking about we'll come back to. This is something I hear a lot. I can't do that. I can't do it. More excuse making than it is. I can't do it. You can do anything you want to do, including fail. You can do it. You know what? This word can't. You look in a dictionary, you can't get to the word can't until you first go past the word can. So you have, to, you have to exhaust the things that you can do before you can't do it. This is what we, where we mess up so much. We have people around us embracing what they can't do, so to say, and we allow them to embrace it because we don't stop them from being in that position of being lackadaisical or lazy. We just simply say it's okay. It's not okay. We have our young people, young men and young women who are dying because there's no one who's telling them you can do. You can do that. When are we going to get away from that? I can't. When are we going to get away from the excuse making? When are we going to resolve the issues that we have developed for ourselves by telling people what they can't do? You can do anything you want to do. 
if you decide to do it, up to and including fail. I don't believe in failure. Do you? Who are you exactly? Are you the kind of person who wakes up every morning, gets up and put the feet on the floor and look for a reason to complain? Look, I, I spent years homeless. And I'll share this a little bit. I spent years homeless. I've eaten from dumpsters. I've eaten garbage. Didn't have a, a place to lay my head down. I could have made excuses upon excuses upon excuses and blamed the whole world and say, it's their fault that I'm in this position, that I'm homeless. And here, understand this too. I have family members. Some people say, why do you go to your family? Well, my family had families. They had their own lives. So I could have spent time saying, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, and justify that, or justify me doing something stupid and blaming it on everybody around me. It's their fault that I didn't overcome a certain situation and circumstances. It's their fault that I didn't have food to eat. It's their fault that I didn't have a roof over my head. How many times have we heard that when you talk to people, the first thing they talk about is excuses for why they are in a position that they are and not changing anything. My daddy, my mama, my sister, my brother, my cousin, my wife, my husband, it's somebody's fault other than theirs. We're not going to change things by continuing to allow the same things over and over again in our lives. What you need to do is just say, I can do that. I can do that. Whatever it is, whatever's hurting you, whatever the situation is, you can overcome it. I didn't want to hurt anybody. I didn't want to kill anybody. I didn't want to do drugs. I didn't want to go to alcohol. I didn't want to do all those, any of those things. Number one reason, and I'm, my uh, sales and marketing guy tells me all the time, and my president says all the time, you know, it's by the grace of God. Absolutely. I am here today by the grace of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Has nothing to do with how good I am or how holy I am or why did this happen to me? I'm here because of the grace of God. Wherever you are right now, you're there by the grace of God. Even if you're in the midst of suffering, even in the midst of the pain that you're going through, even in the midst of you feel like there's no one listening to you, no one cares about you, someone cares about you, God still cares. But sometimes we're just so busy blaming God, we don't see what God's doing. True? We're busy blaming it. It's God's fault. And understand this too. Now, this is something that blew me away. And I know some of those uh, Christian brothers and sisters out there probably get upset with this. But I want you to understand something. When you get mad, when I was getting mad at the situation I was in, I didn't understand it, but this is the truth of the matter. You are getting mad at God, not them. We're blaming God for the situation we find ourselves in. It's God's fault that I was homeless. That's what people will say. It's God's fault that I didn't have food to eat. It's God's fault that I was in a shelter. No, it wasn't. He didn't leave me. He didn't forsake me, but he had to train me. He had to teach me. And those of you who are watching this program, don't think for one moment you're not being groomed for something great. Something amazing is coming your way, but you know what you got to do? You got to go through it to get to, to, it. Get to it. That's the thing we don't, we, we don't realize at times like, oh, you know what? How many of us will follow God as long as God has given us what we want? Doing for us things. As long as the paycheck is there, as long as the roof is over our head, as long as there's food in the freezer and the refrigerator, as long as there's money in the bank account, we will always marvel at the mighty work of God. But then the moment the job that you get the, the, the pink slip from the job and you have the car notes due and you can't pay it, the house note is due and you can't pay it. The food now is diminished in the refrigerator and the freezer. 
The wife is getting on your nerves and now she's ready to get a divorce and, and, and you, your health goes into failing health. And now what do we do? We say, oh God, where's God at now? Let me tell you something. I used to tell this uh, in the messages at times. I said, God is like the furnace. It's really warm when you stay up close. It only gets cold when you move away. You see, God doesn't move. We move. And when we move, we blame God for the movement. Why did God let me? Why did God allow me to get cold? He said, he didn't do it. Oh, yeah, this is getting right back close to the furnace. That's what I, this is. This program is all about unlocking the power of you. But in order to unlock the power of you, you have to understand where the power comes from. This power I'm talking about does not come from me, but it comes through me. The power that we're talking about unlocking is in you, but most of us don't know how to get to it. This program is about helping you reconcile that. How do I, Tim, how do I get to the power? I want the power, I want the power, I want the power. Well, that's what this program is about. We're going to teach you how to get to the power, but you have to first get on board. Get on board. What do I mean by get on board? You have to reconcile the, this thing. I messed up. I messed up. When you recognize that you're messed up, guess what? You can be fixed up. That's the key, isn't it? Yeah. When I recognize that I'm no good, that's when I can begin to do good. Or at least do better. Because we're still messed up, aren't we? Yeah. And we're going to be messed up till we leave here. But, we can have a group of us be messed up together and we can get the mess together, giving it to the right person who can take care of it for us and eliminate the burdens that we're carrying. There's no such thing as you can't do certain things. We have to teach our young people. Oh, wait a minute, scratch that. We have to teach all of our people. Because there's some of us who there's some of us who have, uh, let me put this up here. I, I know some people are going to watch this program and say, man, he's just all over with us. He's just hitting us hard. Many of us do this. But we don't do this. There's a lot of us who are growing old, but we're not growing up. How do you know when you're growing old and not growing up? Because everybody gets on your nerves. You don't like nobody. Everybody's got something. I don't care who you are. We are, we are here to not only grow old, but we should be growing up as we grow old. We should be seasoned. We should be men of wisdom. Young people are looking for older people for wisdom. And where are they finding it? Nowhere much. So what do they turn to? Drugs, alcohol, the streets, and everything else. We have to build them up. We have to show them where the power comes from. And don't do this. Let's not do this thing. Please, let's not do this. Don't say not. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Why not? You're supposed to be my example. You're supposed to be the example to me. If you're growing old and growing up, you are my example. I should be able to look at you and see the way that I need to follow. If I can't follow you, where are you going that I shouldn't go? Hmm. Where are you heading that I can't go? Why are you telling me? I know as adults, we used to do that with our children. And we say, you can't come with me right now. Because some of us knew where we were going. We didn't have any business going. What was that? Where you going? Yeah. <laughs> we know that we had no business going. So how can we tell our children not to go places that we're doing? Th we should never be able to. And I, my children, I've said this to my children. And I'll say it to you guys as well, because this is something that we need to understand with unlocking the power of you. 
I used to always told my children, do, now, I know you heard this saying before, do as I say do, not as I do, not as I do don't we? Yep, yep. We've said that. Why did we say that? Because we're simply saying, I can do this thing, but you shouldn't do this thing. But if this thing over here that I'm doing is hurting me, why am I telling my kids, don't do that? You, what am I saying to them? I'm saying, it's okay for me to kill myself. You do as I say do, but don't do as I do. We are supposed to be their example. I've always taught my children, and God knows they're going to watch this program. Eventually, they're going to say, yeah, Dad, I remember that. I've always told my children, not only do as I say do, but do as you see me do. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Can't say something like that now, can we? Because when I say do as I say do and do as you see me do, that means that they can monitor me. They can watch me. They can listen to me. And if I'm vulgar, I'm nasty, I'm disrespectful, guess what? They're listening, aren't they? And they're saying, well, Dad, you know what? I saw Dad do it. He told me not to do it. But I see when he's doing it, he gets things. He's getting results by being nasty. He's getting results by being negative. He's getting results by being disrespectful. But that's wrong, isn't it? See, this is about unlocking the power of you. In order to unlock the power of you, we have to understand that we're messed up. So when I say do as I say do and do as you see me do, that puts me on front street. It's saying that, hey, dude, you're telling me don't drink. Uh-oh. But I'm seeing you with a Hennessy. The 40 ounce. And I'm talking about, don't, don't, don't drink, man, because this will kill you. This will, this will do you wrong. But I'm doing it. Don't smoke. Because that stuff will kill you. <laughs> It'll kill you. But I'm doing it. That's the example. You can't tell a child, don't do it when they see you do it. That's tough, isn't it? But that's what this is all about. It's about being real. That's what this program is. And I, I hope when Larry, <laughs> when he comes back, they have us next week say, okay, brother, you did okay. Because this is keeping it real. Keeping it real means don't pull the punches. When you throw it, connect. There's far too many of us who are in leadership positions. I'm talking to you pastors out there too now. You're in leadership position and you're not doing what you need to do, that's not unlocking the power. That's unlocking, that's locking cowardice. Because what we do with that cowardice is we embrace it, and we, because we, we're ignorant, if you're ignorant, you can only teach ignorance. That's the bottom line. If you want change, be an example of the change that you're looking for. Don't tell people not to swear when your mouth, you got a potty mouth. Don't tell them don't drink when you, of course, we always know that, you know, here's what I used to hear all the time. And we'll, we'll talk about that later as well. I hear, used to hear it all the time. I, I drink, you know what? And here's the thing, here's the excuse. Brother, you can't tell me not to drink. Jesus drank wine. Jesus drank, so it's okay. You see how we will manipulate Things that we want to fit. You know, you know what? The only time, the only time this book, the only time I disagree with God's word is when God's word disagrees with me. That's something to think about, isn't it? I, I you know what? I'm mad because God says so and so here. You know what? That's the that's a white man's book. He said that. God didn't say that. He said that. Every time I go to the word of God and it says something I don't agree with, then I'm going to justify it by simply saying that book has been tampered with. I'm not believing that. That's, some, that's somebody else's story. You know what? Every book was written by somebody. But you know what this Bible tells me? It says the natural man, the natural man, the fleshly individual can't think of things on a spiritual level. So anytime we have conflict 
is because people are on a natural, a physical level. This program is about lifting people from the physical to the spiritual. We want to get them out of the dark into the light. We want to help us older people. Youngest person in the room is our, uh, you, you don't see him, the youngest person in the room, but we have to all do this part. We need to grow old. As long as we're living, we want to grow old. But as you're growing old, are you growing up? Hmm. Let me put two more words up there then, since we got this growing old and growing up here. Let's look at this then. This, this is something else we have to look at. Again, I want us to understand the power. And this is the other thing. Hmm, wait a minute. What do you mean? Childlike and childish. Is there a difference? Yes, there is. That growing old and growing up? Notice, God's expectation for us is that we become childlike. And many of us, instead of becoming childlike, we become childish. Who are you to tell me, man? You tell me. When I know what you tell me what to do. That's childish. You expect a child to act up, don't you? Why are you acting up then? I've been here, and it, it, let, me, let me go on and make that boast. Man, I've been in here 67 years, and I've been doing this for 67 years, and you're the worst person in the community. That's because you're childish. You're not childlike. Childlike is a, a mentality. A childlikeness means I have a, an awe, a wonderment. I want to know about things. Childish means I already know. And uh, there's another word I'm going to put up here. And, uh, I think you guys like that one. So, All these are things that we're talking about to help us understand who we are. And this one I, you, you hear all the time. Now, there's something missing there. Here's the part that's missing. I'm grown. Man, I'm grown. You can't tell me nothing. I'm grown. God's expectation is not that you and I be grown-ups. That's why that childlike and childish come in. He expects for us to be growing, not grown. Grown means I've reached the apex. I've reached my conclusion. I've reached... The mass, nobody can tell me anything. So when you're grown, that's when you stick your check out, chest out and say, well, you, you, who are you to tell me what to do? Who are you to tell me how to live? I'm grown. Can we just replace that with I'm I'm wrong. Because if you're grown, you're wrong. Now, there's a difference between I'm grown and this. Uh, I, oh, let me put it over here. I think it can still be seen. What's the difference between a grown-up and an adult? Grown-up, you can't tell anything. An adult will listen. An adult is somebody who will listen to you. Now, all of this, we're talking about unlocking the power of you, but we know what? We can't change our young people until we change ourselves, too. Absolutely. That's right. Amen. So what we expect from them, shouldn't they expect something in return from us? I shouldn't be sticking out my chest. I'm grown. If you're an adult, that means, hmm, let me listen to you then. You have something to say. Even if you know it, you don't have to show it. The ultimate reason we are here is to help others to come to that realization. What you already know is what you know. But how do I get someone else in the same position that I am? That means I have to acquiesce. Being an adult means I can pull back and go, okay, okay, I got you. I hear what you're saying. Over here is like, <laughs> who are you talking to? You preaching to the choir. Over here is like, I got it. Oh, man, that's interesting. That's interesting. When I'm grown, I'm wrong. When I'm adult, I'm, I'm willing. 
and able to listen. Am I childlike or childish? I'm giving you guys some keys today. These are key words. This is key. Key words. What are you going to do with the key words that you get? Are you going to go back and say, man, you know, I don't know. I don't know about all that. I, I'm not going to do any of that because that don't make sense to me. It makes sense if you it makes sense if you do it. It doesn't make sense if you're not willing to do it. I'm not here. Oh, wait a minute. This, this might sound bad, but I'm not here to make friends. We're here to win people to Christ, number one. We want them to understand that there is resolve for issues that they're going through in their lives, personal, spiritual, financial, psychological. There are ways to get around these things, and we're here to help them to overcome those things. And we can't overcome those things if we ignore them. That wasn't me. We can't ignore them. We can't ignore them and say, hey, we're making headway. I would love to have 50,000 people watching these videos shortly. But you know what? That's not my call. What we need to do is the part that we've been given to do. And what is that? Put it out there. What did it say in Field of Dreams? If you build it, they will come. If you tell the truth, some are going to hear it. And some are going to be talking about it. Like, oh, man, I, don't, I don't get that. I'm not going to go along with that program. We're here because of words like these. I'm here... And I say that because we want to reach people with the truth. We want to get people to change their lives. They can't change their lives. If those of us who are walking say we're walking in the light, if you're walking in the light and you're busy hiding it from people, I'm doing this. Here's the light, but I'm busy doing this. I'm hiding it from you. No matter where you go, you don't see it because I'm hiding it from you. That's not what we're supposed to do. This is about life changing. Is it relevant? Yes. Is it thought provoking? Yes. Is it life changing? Yes. Is it a challenge? Absolutely. We're going to challenge you every week. There's some things we're putting together. We're going to challenge you. This board will probably be used a thousand times or, or more because what we're looking for is the altering of your mind. As the Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove whether it's that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. We are here because of what God has given to us, what God is doing, what he's showing us, and the examples he's given to us. Everyone in this room is an example. Every one of us have a, a, a responsibility to share what we have. And by the way, those of you who are watching the program and listening to it, if you send emails out and you have something negative to say, and you want to argue with me, this one thing you're never going to have happen here. I don't debate my faith. I only share it. So if you want somebody to argue with you, I'm not the one. I'm merely here to share with you what God has given to me. I've been doing it for 48 years. And in those 48 years, I've never sat on the sideline and argued with anyone about my faith. I know what it means to love the Lord. I know what it's like to walk in faith. I'm going to walk in faith and not by sight. I'm going to walk by faith and not by fear. And believe it or not, there are going to be people going to talk about you. And listen to the young people who watch this program. There are people out there going to talk about you like a dog. They're going to criticize. They're going to bully you. And most of the time they're bullying you because you are not fitting into what they believe is the box that you belong in. We're not here to put you in a box. We're here to help you get out of that box. The only way if you get, get out of that box, you have to get an understanding. Here's, here's that formula. I'm going to put it on the board real quick. Not all of it. But the formula that we use is I plus A equals T. Now I'll give you what that means because our time is almost up here. I plus A equals T, which is information plus application equals transformation. Information is no good if you don't apply it. The Bible is, doesn't mean a thing if you just read it. It doesn't. It's just a book of words. The information is only good once you start applying it to your life. 
And the moment you start applying, and I mean genuinely applying it, not just simply say, oh, I, I can quote it, I know what it says, boom, 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 you got it, great, fantastic. Information plus the application, to that personal involvement brings about transformation. So if you want to get to the transformation, take the information and apply it. And once you start transforming, that transformation takes place because you're applying the information that you have received. All of it works in concert. All of it works together. But nothing is going to happen until you decide to get on board. We need for you to get on board with the information. We need for you to get on the board once you start applying it. But here's the thing, as we said earlier, too, I'm saying these things on this program, but it's you have to watch and make sure that you're seeing the things that we're talking about. Now, all of us out here listening, be mindful of this. Don't tell anybody anything that they can't verify through watching you. I want to see your faith. I don't want you to just talk about it. And now understand what we're saying. We're not talking about religion. We're talking about relationship. I want to see the faith that you're talking about. If it's genuine, I should be seeing you applying it. I should see an application of the, the faith that you're talking about. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Lord. I believe in we're going to heaven. But how is it you talk about heaven and yet you live like, you, like you're going to hell? That's not the solution. This program is, is up to you. It's all about you. Unlocking the power of you. There's some things we're going to be talking about coming up, and there's a lot of books here that we're going to be sharing with you, information in these books, that my president, he's going to be saying some things. He, he's not used to wanting to do that. Then my, my sales and marketing director, who sat over there like still smiling on his face, like I don't know if he's smiling about the program or he's trying to make me smile. But one way or the other. Both. <laughs> so we know something was going on because he's over there smiling. Like, oh. So one way or the other, we know what we have to do. If you are sincere, if you want to get on board with what we're doing, find us. Talk to us. Unlocking the power of you. This is just step one. We appreciate it. We appreciate everything that's been going on. Uh, an hour's worth of time is already up. It didn't seem like an hour. And if it did, that's because you, uh, you didn't invest anything. You can only get out what you put in. That's the bottom line. So we're going to be talking scripture. We're going to get loads, loads and loads and loads of scriptures <coughs> coming up too because I want people to understand that the 48 years that I've been in the Lord, this is my, that's my first call. First call is to the ministry. Then he gave me the books. That's part of the ministry. So the word and the books are all part of the same uh, process. God gave it to us, gave it to us for a purpose, and that is to put it out there. That's why we have this program, Unlocking the Power of You. And we're going to thank you. And we're going to get ready to come to the conclusion. And anybody over on the side want to scream out anything? Are you guys are happy and satisfied with where we're going for program one? Okay, well, uh, I just was wondering, uh, 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 and like in case there's somebody who heard you or listened to the program and they would like to uh, purchase a uh, particular and spiritual book, is there a certain book and that you uh, could recommend to them and based on, on the lesson of this afternoon? Well, mm, not yet. Not yet, but they, they uh, if they're interested, they can reach out to us either through KZ, I'm sure he, they can uh, do that here, or just reach out to me through timwhite55 at gmail.com and that will, we can help them through that source as well. Okay. All right. Mr. Sales Director, you have anything that you want to say before we, we, we got about a minute left here? Implementing the life's three changes. Mm -hmm. Choices, challenges, and changes. Think about that radio audience. So those of you who didn't hear me, he was talking about choices, challenges, and changes. Implementing life's three C's. 
And we'll be talking about that at length coming up too. Uh, be prepared. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Thanks for listening. See, that was a smile there. Yeah, you started off and you ended with a smile. Yeah, so okay, uh, we, we did it. We got we. it. We.